Total shock, heartless, and a kick in the teeth are just a few ways people have described the Jindal administration's closing of a prison in southwest Louisiana. The majority of the inmates at the medium security prison will head to maximum security facility at Angola. The governor says the move will save Louisiana $12 million a year. But as the holidays approach, over 250 people in De Quincey will lose their job at the Phelps Correctional Center. De Quincey is a railroad town. This beautifully restored Mission Revival train station is now a museum and stands as a centerpiece to the community's proud history of railroads and a hard-working middle class. But that modern-day workforce took a serious blow. 259 jobs were lost practically overnight at the Paul Phelps Correctional Facility. Department of Public Safety and Corrections Secretary Jimmy LeBlanc called Warden Robert Henderson to tell him his medium security prison will close down November 1st. A DOC press release followed later last Friday afternoon. De Quincey is a town of about 7,000 in southwest Louisiana and word of the prison closing has hit hard. And it was the way the word got out that have left many here feeling railroaded. Well, nobody bothered to tell me and I was in Baton Rouge uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Nobody bothered to tell me a thing. Did you ask then? I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wasn't given any information at all. Yeah. And that kind of stung a little bit. Well, it kind of devastated me because I wasn't anticipating it. We had been funded for this year by the legislature, approved by the governor. He gave us a budget. But three months after the general legislative session ended, Governor Bobby Jindal said closing Phelps will save the state $12 million in the next fiscal year. I do think Jimmy LeBlanc, the Department of Corrections, I do think they reached out and, and talked to local folks, including legislators. But secondly, I, when you look at why they made the decision uh, to close Phelps and move those prisoners to other state facilities, it was costing the state over $50 per day per inmate to house those prisoners at Phelps. It's going to cost the state less than $16 per day to house those same prisoners at two other state facilities. Still, Southwest lawmakers said they were caught by surprise of the governor's decision. Representative Brett Guyman of Lake Charles said, I believe legislators deserve more respect than this and should be included in discussions on issues of this importance. And the Lake Charles American Press newspaper also criticized the governor in a Tuesday editorial, stating, The governor doesn't miss an opportunity to tout economic development projects, whether they are big or small. But when it comes to the loss of jobs that will be devastating to De Quincey's economy and tax base, the word trickles out on Friday. The good folks of De Quincey and those loyal employees of Phelps deserved much better than this. Word of the prison closure left other local officials shocked, including De Quincey Mayor Lawrence Hannigan. He estimates this will mean a 10 percent hit to the town's annual budget. It's like a bombshell was dropped on you, you know. To, uh, uh, to the town, especially those 250 people that lost a job, and didn't even get the courage of a phone call or a little advance warning. They found about it by the news media that night, the majority of them did. Some people say, well, that's 250 people. No, it's not. That's 250 families. That's husband and wife, you're talking 500 people, a couple of kids. Now you are up to 1,000 people you've affected just like that. We house minimum to medium security offenders. Most of the offenders here currently have uh, 10 years or less. Captain Jeremy Mitchell has a wife and two kids and has worked at Phelps for 12 years. Just last week, he finished building a new home. Matter of fact, Friday, the bricklayers finished up at 12 o'clock and I was excited and then at about 4.30, you know, we got the call that we were closing and, you know, it's, it's kind of devastated. But it's not just me. I mean, it's, it's not. All of us out here, every one of us has plans and we had dreams and we had ideas and you know, you're, you're coming up on the holiday season of the year and, and people, people had stuff that we were planning on doing for our families. The people are still coming to work because it is our job to protect the citizens of Louisiana. And that's what we do and we take it very seriously. And so even, even with bad news, we are still here doing our job. A press release from Pam Laborde with the State Department of Corrections said in part, 
Phelps was chosen for consolidation because the facility was old and inefficient, making it very costly for taxpayers to operate. This is a good deal for Louisiana taxpayers and will result in significant savings while maintaining public safety. Is this prison old and inefficient? This prison is the second oldest in the state. But I would ask you, what prison is the oldest in the state? What prison is that? Angola. What prison uh, normally, during flood season, worries about having to evacuate all their inmates because the Mississippi River is going to flood the area? Mm -hmm. And it still may do it. Mm -hmm. So I ask you, which one is the safest prison? Within the last 10 years, $2.9 million was spent to build new buildings here and do upgrades on various things, including building a chapel. That uh, donations were made by people in the state of Louisiana, you know, to fix. So it was a fairly modernized prison uh, in the last 10 years. The warden points to money saving efforts prison has a working farm, and because of it, the warden says it costs about $1.30 to feed each inmate three meals a day, where that costs about $1.70 in other facilities. The warden added after absorbing budget cuts for three straight years, his facility returned $140,000 in state funds last year. All those things considered, I just didn't feel like that we would be one that would be closed, because we were one of the most efficient operations in the state. What are you telling your, your employees? I'm telling them that we work for the prerogative of the legislature and the governor. And, uh, you know, that whatever they say, well, that's what we have to go by. What are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm going to try to find another job somewhere. The mayors of De Quincey, Lake Charles, and Vinton met with the governor's chief of staff, Stephen Wagasback, on Wednesday. I'm told Wagasback and Corrections Secretary Jimmy LeBlanc were apologetic for how the situation was handled. Members of the Workforce Commission met with Phelps employees to work on job options. The governor was pressed by reporters on whether he thought enough information was provided to legislators about the prison closure. He answered yes and did not elaborate. 